serious? I think you're, you sound serious. You, you really are, I think you're serious about this. Okay. I've never seen you so serious. <laughs> okay, I'm not serious. I'm Good. Sheila, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, that's more like it. But I should be serious. I don't know any of this stuff. What, well, freshman bio, oh, it's a piece of cake. What? No problem, it's a cinch. Okay, pre-med. You must know this stuff inside out, backwards mm. and forwards. Why didn't I think of that? You may just have your chance to be my white knight after all. Rescue you from biology 103? Oh, Rust, wouldst thou? When? Mm, after my last class, I'll meet you at your house. And I get practice. Okay, after practice, I'll wait in front till you get home. Okay, but I need enough time to change. Then we'll come back here. I get the distinct impression that uh, you don't want to be alone with me. I don't bite. I promise. Lester, Terry's the best nurse on our staff. Well, of course, you'd say that. Look, I don't care if she is Lori's mother. She's the best one for the job. Yeah, Ben's right. You know, in all my years on the hospital staff, I've never known a better qualified candidate. Yes, yes, I know, I know. She is absolutely impeccable. She's just almost too good. Oh? Well, what are you saying? That you want someone a little more irresponsible? Um, someone with a bad temper, maybe, like... Um, Arlene Guthrie, remember her? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, or how about somebody with a little less experience? Oh, that's exactly what this hospital needs. Mm -hmm. That's not what I mean. It's her attitude. She, the way she sometimes... Well, I mean, she talks to you-know-who as if he was really a real, uh... You-know-who? You-know-who? Oh, him, right. The big guy upstairs. Yes, and I don't mean the sixth floor either. Now, I can't have my head nurse carrying on like that. This is a hospital. How do you mean, carrying on? I don't know. Uh, dropping gobbledygook from the Bible every chance she gets? Uh, come on, Lester. What are you getting at? Look, I just don't think this is the right place. I want my head nurse not to be preaching to everybody. I want her to be reading charts, not scriptures. At least while she's here. Well, then how do you explain her excellent record? Look, you think she's spending too much time saving sinners instead of tending to her patients. It's not what it says in here. Look, I don't care what Terry believes in as long as she keeps it to herself. Have you had any complaints about Terry? Well, as a matter of fact, I've been told that Mr. Benton in 307 finds her intolerable. Right. And the exception proves the rule. I mean, Benton can't stand Terry because she's the only nurse who still treats him cheerfully and respectfully after his insults and his wisecracks. And his pinchings. Yes, I know. Those people like Terry can be very forgiving. Well, wait, now, wait a minute. Those people? Well, now, don't get it personally. I didn't mean you. You're different. Oh. Well, you're not talking about anyone, because when you start talking about those people, you're not talking about people, about individuals. What you're talking about is your own preconceived notions, your own blind prejudice. Lester, you're concerned that Terry's faith is going to get in the way of her hospital duties. And yet all the feedback that you receive on her work is fantastic. The hospital staff respects her. The patients adore her. Lester, you're just looking for somebody to give you a reason for not promoting Terry. We just can't do that. Mind if I join you? You know the answer to that. Ah, uh, tisk, tisk, tisk. You should be ashamed of yourself. Studying this early in the morning in biology, no less. Big test Friday. Mmm, see, if you wouldn't have wasted all those years playing pinball in high school, you'd know all this stuff already. Ah, uh, yes, the foolishness of youth. Mm-hmm. How are your blisters, by the way? Healing very nicely, thank you. Care for a rematch? I can't, really. You serious? You really serious? I think you're you sound serious. You really are. I think you're serious about this. I've never seen you so serious. 
Okay, I'm not serious. I'm Good. Sheila. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That's more like it. But I should be serious. I don't know any of this stuff. What? Freshman bio. Oh, it's a piece of cake. What? No problem. It's a cinch. Okay, pre-med. You must know this stuff inside out, backwards mm. and forwards. Why didn't I think of that? You may just have your chance to be my white knight after all. Rescue you from biology 103? Oh, Rust, wouldst thou? When? Mm, after my last class, I'll meet you at your house. And I get practice. Okay, after practice, I'll wait in front till you get home. Okay, but I need enough time to change. <laughs> then we'll come back here. How come I get the distinct impression that you don't want to be alone with me? <clears throat> Don't bite. I promise. Sentimental reasons. Bio and I spend a whole lot of time in this place. Matter of fact, right here in this very booth. Any place else just wouldn't be the same. Okay, okay, we'll come here. I've got to get to class. I've got a lab dissecting frogs. Ooh. Any pointers? Uh, yeah. Uh, cut uh, lengthwise. Thanks. See you later. Bye. <laughs> uh, stems of the monocots, similar to the herbaceous dicots. Doing here? Isn't it a gorgeous day? I've just been sitting here soaking it all in. The flowers are starting to bloom and everything's so fresh. Mom. I'm so glad I ran into you. Oh, pure coincidence, I'm sure. Well, I admit I did have a little help from that darling Mr. Harris in the registrar's office who told me about your 11 o'clock class. Why didn't you tell me you were coming? You know me. I got this bug in my ear and flew down yesterday on the spur of the moment. Spring makes me do crazy things sometimes. Yeah, well, you could have warned me. Since when must a mother warn her son that she's visiting? Nonsense. I wanted to surprise you. How's Becky? Becky's fine. We're both fine. How about you? Exhilarated. I love the spring. How's school coming along? School's fine. It's great. What about Becky's career? <clears throat> Becky's career is fine. Also great. It's good to hear that everything is so great and fine. I got your new address. Very fancy. What we meant? Funny, I thought it had something to do with Becky's career. Mom. Must have been something else. <laughs> Mom, why don't you spend your time here with Vince? He needs you. And you don't? Well, if you would have told us that you were coming, like maybe a phone call, we could have made some plans. I came to visit, not to be entertained. You don't have to make plans for me. Yeah, I'm sure you already have plans already. Meaning? Meaning you can't pry Becky and I apart. I don't care what kind of strategies you've come up with or devices. We are not splitting. You say that with such assertiveness. It's obvious your relationship is already in trouble. Nothing we can't handle. Russell, what happened to great and fine? Mom, you're going to find a whole lot of different things about me now. I don't have the time or patience to be polite. Becky and I are nailing things down. Don't get in our way. You wanted to see me? Oh, Terry, please, come in. Have a seat. Thank you. Everyone's very pleased with your work here. Well, I do my best. Oh, excellent record. Top notch all the way. Terry, we've reached a decision. We'd like you to be the new director of nursing. Me? Mr. Lewis, that's wonderful. I, I won't disappoint you, I promise. Oh, I'm sure you won't. You were far and away the most qualified. Oh, Mr. Lewis, I, I can't thank you enough. Praise the Lord. Uh, Terry, there is one thing I want to talk to you about. Yes? Well, it has to do with your... Well, I mean, I wouldn't want my director of nursing to 
Well, of course, our employees are free to believe whatever they choose. Well, I should think so. But when they start forcing those beliefs on other people, that that's when I have to draw the line. Force? Well, I don't mean that you do it. I simply want you to understand my position. But you said you were satisfied with my performance oh, here. Oh, certainly I am. But there was that one embarrassing incident. What incident? Well, that unfortunate incident not too long ago where your friend was healed. Mr. Lewis, we've got some of the finest medical minds in the state here. They agreed it was a miracle. Now, unexplained was the term that I heard, and I'd prefer that you didn't offer your own explanations too readily. Now, this is a hospital. I understand your concern. All I want you to do is consider your position here. As director of nursing, the hospital is your first responsibility. I'll do my best. That's all I ask. But, Mr. Lewis, if someone should need the faith I've been given, whoever it is, patients, doctor, nurse, whoever, I can't shirk my greater responsibility to share that faith. I'm always available. Look, as long as it doesn't interfere with the smooth operation of the hospital. Now, understood? At the proper time, of course. Mm. I know you'll do a good job. You have the support of the entire staff behind you. Thank you. With God's help, I'll do the best I can. Well, start working with Rosemary immediately. She'll show you the ropes. That's all. Thanks again. Always available. Marvelous. Good morning. Morning. Becky, it's almost two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, well, I just woke up, so it's morning to me. <laughs> and it better be a good one. What do you get? Hey, can I get some coffee? Well, kiddo, we are getting there, slowly but surely. Mm, last night was terrific. It went so smooth, Dave. It was a good sound. Really good sound, Angel. <laughs> How's your voice? <laughs> it's my girl. <laughs> what we've been rehearsing is the title track, Becky. That's the biggie. I know, David. It's so wonderful. It's wonderful, honey. It's just starting. I can't wait till you hit the charts. And zoom all the way to the top. <laughs> Look, I've booked another uh, late afternoon rehearsal, day after tomorrow in the studio. I think it's 7 till 3 a.m. <laughs> David, what is it with you recording in all the wee hours of the morning? I don't know what it is, but the uh, that regular 9 to 5 routine just doesn't work with music people. Energy's all wrong. I've tried recording during the day before, and it just never works. Besides, it's cheaper. I guess we're all used to working at night, you know, with all these club gigs and everything like that. That's part of it, I'm sure. Maybe I'm just a little superstitious. Well, either way, I am now working on CST. That's Cohen Standard Time, where lunch is breakfast, um, afternoon is morning, night is day, and up is down. <laughs> <laughs> You're starting to get the hang of this business, kiddo. It's wacko. Yeah, well, I was always kind of a crazy kiddo, so it comes naturally for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Becky, I've been wanting to tell you, your stamina has been dynamite, like a pro. The band, the crew, everyone's been impressed. What's to impress? I was just doing my part like everybody else. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, you know, the long hours, the endless takes, the, the, the long rehearsals, carry out food, I mean, just carry goes Carry out food, please, David. No more moo goo guy pan. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much moo goo guy pan this week that I can pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm serious, though. You'd be surprised how many people crumble under that kind of pressure. You've stuck it out like a real professional. Thank you. It just didn't feel like anything special. That's probably why it was. Uh, guess I'm getting used to the routine. You know, all those new faces and... It makes a big difference. I'm even getting comfortable around New York. How about around me? You mind, I'll be out in a minute, okay? <laughs> Hey, how was that for a quick change artist, huh? What do you think? It's the latest in campus casual. Very original. Uh, are you ready? 
Uh, no. Just a minute. Let me look through this box for the biology notes. I can't believe how neat this place is. Yeah, well, I haven't been here long enough to do any damage yet. Mm. Here they are. Biology 103. Man, do I remember that class. You know, these notes are worth a fortune. Especially the little phone numbers on the uh, margins. Ooh. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Between these notes and my invalued medical insights, you should get through this with flying colors. I'm afraid at this late date, a brain transplant is our only hope. Oh, brain transplant. Now that could be challenging. <laughs> I could make medical history. Yes, uh, you would be Dr. Frankenstein and I would be the monster. But at least you'd pass biology. It's a deal. You got it. But if I flunk, I'm suing you for malpractice. Uh-oh. And uh, I don't want one of those kinky scars running down my forehead. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> After you. Well, hello. Hi. Ah, uh, look, why don't you go ahead and uh, go on ahead of me, and I'll meet you there in about 15 minutes, OK? OK. okay. My, my, my. Becky's new agent has done wonders with her image. Ha ha, mother. I'd love to meet her plastic surgeon. Show me a little bit more respect. Okay. Meatloaf, do this is. All right, that's a little better. After all, you are addressing the new director of nursing at Kingsley General. Oh, Mom, that's great. <laughs> hey, why didn't you say so? That's oh, fantastic. Thanks to God. Yeah. What, have a celebration? Let's have a picnic. A picnic, yeah. I've already asked the Cummings. And Jill. And Jill. My favorite jailbird. Oh, come on, Peter. You know how I feel about her. Yes, I do, and I don't like it very much. Well, she is a pretty good mechanic. For speaking, a girl. Speaking of cars, yours sounded like a boat when you drove in. Yeah, I know. I'm working on it. Well, what are we going to have at this uh, celebration? Ham and cheese sandwiches. You call that a celebration? Look, we're going to have a real picnic. A uh, fried chicken and potato salad and deviled eggs, you know, the works. Yeah, well, that may sound like a real picnic to you, but it's no picnic to me. I can help. Tell you what. I'll buy a bucket of chicken. I know what you're thinking, and it's not what it seems. I was just helping her with her biology. <laughs> Nature's given her a head start. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Of all the explanations. Well, it just so happens to be true. Helping her with her biology. Yes. I'm sure you are. It's just that I've never heard it expressed so scientifically before. Mother, we're just <laughs> friends. I'm so glad. She's a lovely girl. And how is your lovely wife? Not within striking distance, No, Becky's in New York. She's up there on a recording session. Oh? Yeah, that's the break she's been waiting for. Wonderful. Becky's off in New York making the big time, and you're down here just making time. I told you we're just... Oh, I heard. Okay, Mom. Maybe things aren't perfect between Becky and me, but I'll tell you something. That's our problem, not yours. We'll take care of things and work it out, thank you. How can you work it out when she's in New York? You know how much her career means to her. Much more than her marriage. Mom, just leave, will you? It's my marriage and I... You can what? Put it back together again? You can save it? Oh, Russell, if you'd just listened to me in mm. the first place, you wouldn't be facing such an impossible task mm -hmm. now. Very classy place. Vince wanted you to get through med school, not into the pages of House Beautiful. Who's paying for this? It's a gift from Becky's manager. 
A gift. He wanted her to live in a nicer place, that's all. He's worried about her image. Her image? <laughs> As what? A kept woman? Oh, you're a fine one to talk. That was different. Was it? I didn't have a husband. Of course, Becky probably won't have one either before long. I'm glad you have your blonde co-ed to pass time. I have no one at home to keep me company. Well, what makes you think you have someone here? 